Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome again, everybody. This will be another podcast on the sciences. This was an interesting article I read. It was about lava tubes on Mars being found, and could they be used for shelter? I've been fascinated with Mars. Uh, I always kind of thought we'd be there already, like a little terraforming type project. So it's always been something I've been fascinated with, as with all planets and all the science stuff. So this article is by Katie Pallister. It's titled, Researchers Identify Underground Lava Tubes on Mars That Could Shelter First Explorers. So right away, I'm really set. I saw some designs that um, some companies had come up with in the past over my delvings into stuff like this. And they showed like little, almost like pill-like capsules, giant ones that people would live in underground. And these might be the perfect things to start with. So right away, I'm all excited and I bookmarked it and made sure I do a podcast on it. So I'll start with Mars is a pretty hostile place for visitors, having lost its magnetic field and most of its atmosphere. The red planet's surface is exposed to high levels of cosmic radiation, which we are shielded from by Earth's magnetosphere. In large doses, the highly ionizing rays can penetrate tissue, leading to radiation sickness or even death. Therefore, when the first astronauts land on Mars, there needs to be adequate shelter to protect them from the planet's inhospitable conditions. Scientists have discovered that the habitats that could offer this protection are underground lava tubes, and there are links, found on terrestrial planets, as well as moons. Lava tubes are formed when channels of lava cool and harden to form igneous rock. When the lava flow beneath ultimately stops and drains out, a natural subsurface cave is left behind. Whilst on Earth, these tubes reach only about 30 meters, 100 feet across. On Mars, where there is less gravity, they can be up to 250 meters, 820 feet in width. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> A new study published on the preprint server, there's a link, Arxiv, has identified three candidate lava tubes that could serve as home sweet home for future visitors, as well as a possible site for discovering previous microbial life on Mars. Located in the large Hellas impact basin on Mars' southern hemisphere, the lava tubes sit in close vicinity, in close vicinity, of the ancient volcanic mountain Herodicus Mons. Radiation at this lower lying region of Mars has already measured at levels considerably less than the rest of the planet's surface. To add to the allure of these caverns, experiments by the study authors in lava tubes on Earth suggest that they could shield a further 82% of incoming radiation. All this exposure would still be significantly more than on Earth, A reduction of any kind would be welcomed by crewed missions. And this is where I think those capsules could fit in. Maybe that was part of this type of idea. I'll continue. Lava tubes have previously been suggested by scientists as possible habitats on the moon. There is a link there. Where these lunar caverns are vast enough to fit historic city center of Riga inside, But to find these other ground nooks on Mars, Professor Antonio Paris and colleagues had to scour images from cameras on board NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, for clues. These come in the form of pit crater chains, a series of round depressions caused by the collapsing or sinking of a surface above a hollow void. And they show images. Another giveaway of lava tubes are skylights. This is also in quotes and is a link. 
The open entrances to these caves. On Earth, astronauts use skylights to access lava tubes for training. But on Mars, the authors suggest that these openings could even be sealed off to enable the caverns to be warmed up and pressurized with breathable air. That's interesting. That's cool. Regardless, these natural caverns would provide the crew protection from excessive radiation exposure, shelter them from the bombardment of micrometeorites, and protect them a degree and provide them a degree of protection from extreme temperature fluctuations, the authors wrote in their paper, acceptable for publication by the Journal of Washington Academy of Science. And there's a link there. Although lava tubes are rather a rather unusual place to call home, they could very well be the most comfortable place to be on the red planet. Here is a video. I'll be providing a link to this article. Uh, I think the site is IFL Science, and it's I fucking love science. Uh, the creator just did a video on YouTube, uh, Facebook explaining that she finally, she didn't want to change the name, but she it's now IFL. Anyway, I've loved, like I said in the beginning, Mars has fascinated me. I remember thinking when I was younger that we would have at least sent devices to start giving Mars a stable atmosphere. I thought that would have been in the process already. I think some of the dilemma started happening with our, I guess our discussions on what life would be, when do we interfere. Like if we find a certain amount of life on Mars... We can't terraform it, that type of thing, which I kind of think is ridiculous. Uh, maybe for a certain stages of protecting and getting research and samples and that type of thing. But I thought there would be something already there. Now, it looks like we're going to be going and doing it on the moon first, which I always thought was their plan. I think the logic of it or the reason is you set up a place on the moon, you put a base there when you want to send ships out and it, there's no gravity of earth to resist. So that would be the perfect staging ground for setting up a Mars type thing or journey. And I'm not even sure if the same rules apply. Like there was always that rule. It's a one way trip. I'm not too sure that's going to be the case by the time it happens. Let's say in the next four, I think it's three to five years. We're going to have uh, something on the moon. Let's say uh, in total, 7 to 11 years, well, we're going to have more probes and better equipment on Mars. So you can set up a facility to send out to Mars. You know, maybe there are breakthroughs in fuel and rocket and how it works. But I think they'll have a backup plan, like a piggyback, like send another ship out for two days on a mission to not do any landing but to pick people up who have to leave that type thing so i'm not even sure if that'll help or if that's part of it but i could see them creating a base on the moon in the process of doing that these probes and these machines will solidify these lava tubes or verify their protection the levels of protection so i think it's fascinating that these could be the first homes for the people on mars and how cool it'll be for, like, people in the future where they'll have, like, a license and it'll be, like, place of birth, Mars. It's just so much cool sci-fi, uh, and you know, level of uh, wonder that it really excites me. Being 49 going on 50, I hope to see a lot of these things in my uh, future. I think it'll be amazing. Uh, these people are heroes, and I believe science and the exploration of space is really important. I wish they would just fucking trim back on our fucking military shit, but that's more into politics. But to have an environment ready for us on Mars would be really, really fun and cool to look into. Like I said, I was looking into things already about the follow the new uh drones are going to be putting, uh, sending to Mars. And I had seen something that looked like the little pill bottles or pills in underground. And these would be like, look like they'd be perfect. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. 
I'm always interested on things that are going on with our space program and what we're going to be doing with Mars. I think we're going in the right direction. I wish it would be faster, but hey, you know, that's how life goes. All right. I hope everybody's interested in science as much as I am. I hope you look forward to more of these podcasts. They're fun to do. It's always fun to just open an article and put on my mics and get content out there that uh, excites me. I look forward to hearing from you. You know what to do. Hope to see and hear from everybody soon. Bye-bye now.